Yes, hello guys, and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager Save. This is episode number 70. Instead of returning with two big games with our cherries, I took on Benfica at home in the third game of the Champions League league phase and leads away at Ellen Road as we aim to stay top of the table. Before we get to the game, though, Jared Wolf from getting on off camera. And of course, in the last episode, you saw our Tuna win against. <laughs> Sorry, do you remember our Tuna win against Sunderland? And in our Champions League debut, well, we had less people turning up for our Champions League debut than we did in a win against Sunderland. Classic. But uh, following that, we had our first loss of the season. I said, can we maintain our home set start? The answer was no. We lost our following game away against Brentford in London. Uh, we fell behind early, then Kazada uh, scored two minutes later to find the leveler, but Vitaly Janelle banged one in later on to give Brentford a win there and send the community stadium into wild scenes of celebrations in our first loss of the season. But great bounce back, to be fair, and all the games instead of being really good results, winning them all apart from one draw. But even that felt like a win. Began with a 6-1 win uh, against Morecambe in the Carrick Cup third round. Won't bother you showing the highlights here. We draw against Doncaster at home in the following round. That comes actually directly after today's episode wraps up. But after that, though, big uh, tuna win against Spurs here at the Eddie Howe Stadium. Um, I have to say, though, one of those games where we were very lucky. Like, really, really lucky. I always have my hands on the to that. If I've been lucky, I'll tell you. This is one of those games. Scoreline very deceptive. Spurs, much better team. Had this allowed goal. We won it by two goals to nil. First on Rico Araujo, filling in for Kual, who won injured in the uh, Brentford game and then Suchic headed in a cross late on to give us an undeserved 2-0 win but the following game was a massive massive point away at the part of the France uh, took on PSG for our first big boy Champions League game and we held him to a goal of draw Georgie though made this incredible save right at the end one on one denying Vinicius and you see his, his rating there man of the match in the game this is why I persist with the guy I know he lets me down occasionally but every now and then he'll play a blinder and pick me up a point practically single handedly so yeah, Georgie man the match there in a 0-0 draw against PSG. And following that, back-to-back -back wins and clean sheets with a 1-0 win against West Ham. Dominated this game. Should have won it by more, really. Kazada scored the only goal of the game, capitalising on a goalkeeping error from a corner. But, as you will see... He's down and he's out and I'll show you how bad it is in just a moment's time. But the final game of Carroll was a 2-0 win at home to Brighton. Yep, 2-0 win there against Brighton. Newly promoted to the Premier League for this year. Alex Scott scoring our opening goal. 11 minutes in. Great start to the season for him. And then Lucas Su just got a second late on in a 2-0 victory. So, yep, back on track in the Premier League on the back of the loss to Brentford. And right now, Bournemouth are top. Eight wins in nine games. Just a one defeat coming away against Brentford. We've got the best offensive record. We've got the joint best defensive record. We've got the best goal difference in the division. No one has lost as uh, many, as few games as us, a joint fewest games, I should say. And no one's won more games than we have, hence why we're top. With four points clear around United, Liverpool got a game in hand, though, and Arsenal got two games in hand. So taking it with a pinch of salt, but this is the best start to the season we've ever had. The real question is can we maintain it? And obviously, it's early days in the Champions League league phase. Uh, two of the opening eight games we've played, so only the quarter of the way through. But uh, a big point away at PSG, and now taking on Benfica, win this game, and that will be massive here to mean that three games in will be in a promotion place, if you will, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, anyway, um, so yeah, uh, Kazada's injury, I want to show you that real briefly before we dive into the first game of this episode. We have had quite a few knocks. <laughs> Of course, I'm looking at the home crone stats when I look at my squad more than anything. We have had um, a few knocks uh, recently and some big injuries as well. Like I said, Kawhi is just coming back uh, from injury. Uh, I think he played uh, the last game, didn't he? But uh, yeah, he's still coming back and not fully fit yet. Traore is the exact same as well. Not fully fit with the high injury risk as well. Um, you would have seen there, Rodri is down. That's an absolutely massive blow for us. Paul need ligaments in the win against West Ham. So massive blow for our star world-class midfielder coming in but the big injury of course Kazada oh look at these red arrows he was working towards a trait as well which is likes to round keeper now that's been cancelled due to the injury two month injury or possibly three month injury depending on how severe the recovery takes but yeah, massive, massive injury. Torres knee ligaments. But I did say this. The only concern with Kazada is the fact he appears to be slightly injury played. Where's the medical history? Is it here? Where's the... I've lost the medical history. Where's the... Where's the... I've, I've lost the medical. I can't find a medical thing. Oh, injuries, of course. There we go. Sorry, that's a good one. Um, but yeah, um, he's Torres knee ligaments. And he's, ever since signing for us last season... 
He's had a lot of injuries. You know, he's had an awful lot of injuries since coming in. And okay, there haven't been any significant ones up until now. But a few weeks here and there were missed last season. Hence why he didn't get to 30 league games for us. I knew this was coming. It was only a matter of time. It was a ticking time bomb. At some point, he was going to get a big injury. He's got it. He's down. And uh, we won't see him again for at least, at least another two months. Absolutely gutting. And these red arrows are horrendous to look at. So heading into the first game of today's episode, uh, it is indeed Benfica in the third game of the Champions League league phase. Will we get more people turning up this time? Yes, a few more people turning up than the debut against Olympiacos. But uh, heading into the game, like I said, quite a few players are down for this one here and that's why heading into the game i got to be honest, I'll probably take a point in this one here, despite the fact we were considered favourites ordinarily. But this is our team. Uh, we've got Georgian Gull, about for a small comb. And as you'll see, I have changed a couple of roles here in the team. Uh, we've got a no-nonsense centre-half that's now a Coley. Small comb's changed to full-back. George is no longer sweeper-keeper. Anyway, he's alongside guards with Aaron's at right-back. Uh, I've been changing deep-line playmaker from Anchorman due to Rodri's injury. He was originally an Anchorman. Now I've pushed Meerdrag up to DLP, like I did say I was going to do in the season opener. He's now DLP alongside McTominay. Elise and Sujic, the inside forwards, and Scott supports Araujo up top. On the bench, you've got Ward, Mascari, recovering from a twisted ankle, so he's also been down as well. Don't think we'll see him today, at least not in the first game. Mitchell, Lopez, the chump. Forsby, Urasevich, Radalovic, Fernandez, Traore, Delap, and Koala as well. Quite a few injuries to the Cherries, but that is to be expected with our our team. Yet the Bournemouth board, despite all the money I've given them, can't be fucked to give me one more physio. Typical. Anyway, heading into the game, not that really matters too much. But anyway, heading into the first game, Benfica. Let's get our second win in the CL here. Come on, you Charis. Yeah, it's so annoying how the Bournemouth board, I've been asking, I kid you not, for years. Literally for seasons. It's been 84 years. It's not, but it's felt like it. I've been asking for seasons and seasons and seasons. Bournemouth board, can you please give me some extra sports scientists? We've only got three. We've only got three sports scientists. It's such an important you know, profession in modern day football now. And yet the Bournemouth board, what an interception there to deny a clear goal for Alex Scott. The Bournemouth board refused to give it even just one more. I've been asking for years. Sujic to Aaron's down the right hand side. And McTominay takes over. Dinks went to the middle. There's Araujo. And at the second time of asking, he's denied. Great double saders are still 0-0. Enrique looking for a goal against his former club there, lest we forget. Moved on to Newcastle in the same after we picked him up. He'd love a goal against his old team tonight. Still 0-0, but that first goal is coming for Bournemouth right now. We've got Benfica right where we want them. Small comb to Mia Drag. And now McTominay takes over. Back to Okoli. Dinks one forward. Kiefer comes and claims it. Still 0-0. Surely that breakthrough is just a matter of time. Pasolic, dispossessed by Elise. Now Sucic, great chance here. Araujo must finish this one. He doesn't. He clips the post and Benfica escape. How have we not broken that deadlock yet? We've hit the post. There's been a brilliant save. There's been a cert goal cleared after Scott rounded the keeper. I can't believe it's still 0-0. And we almost went a goal down. These are those games where you can't you can't be too critical, even though you're still tied, still level, because I mean you're doing all the right things. You just haven't had that finishing touch yet. Maybe you can change your personnel up top. Maybe you can criticise your players up top. But really, tactically, things are working. Like We're getting those chances. We've got good chances. We just haven't taken them yet. Benfica growing in confidence, though, after a tough start for them. Growing in confidence into the game here. Esri Concer is down the right. Balls into the middle. And it's turned in by Pasolic. It's going to stand. That won't be chalked off. We've been dominating and now we're behind. Wow, did not see that coming. But I am going to berate my boys because we should not be a goal down here after that's this great start. But we are and we need to find a level of before the break. Don't want to go into half time, still tied. What a ball by Mia Drag. That's going to stand that one, surely. It'll go to VAR, but I think that will stand as well. I think he tied that run perfectly, Luca, at the back post. And Mia Drag, when I say he put it on a plate for him, oh no! That's one of the best crosses I've ever seen. I want to see how tight that was there. Because he looked onto me, Sucic. Oh, no, he's just off. Right decision, just off. That was a cracking ball by Mia Drag. Half we've dominated. I still can't believe we're going down here. McTominay coming forward. That's a Raulho ahead of him. He'll slide him through. Enrique, this time, finds the back of the net. Is that going to be disallowed? Is that going to be disallowed? Second goal we've scored in two minutes. Are they both going to get chalked off or will this one stand? Good ball by Scott. And this one does count. Araujo with the goal against his former team. And his fourth of the year fitting in for the injured Kowal. Great dribble from Scott McTominay after picking it up. 
Playing for a contract, of course, and at this rate, he's definitely going to get one. Henri go to finish 1-1. Heck of a first half. This had everything, hasn't it? Brilliant first half. And still, we've got 10 minutes before the break, as both teams will look to get in front before that half-time whistle. Really, we should be two goals up, though. The chances we've had out there... This, this, these are the games where you, you have to just say, fair enough, do you know what I mean? Like, in the games you've dominated, tactically you've been fine, but you just haven't taken those chances, and you've only really conceded by maybe one or two chances on your goal. You just got to hold your hands up and say, you know what, sometimes that's football, sometimes that's life. We've we've been fine out there. We've been totally fine. As Suchic gets over the halfway line and slides for Elise. He's got Araujo with him. He'll find him. He's onside there, and it's deflected in. I don't think that's his goal. I think it's an own goal, that. I think that's an own goal. Does he, does he get that? I think I think he might try and claim it. It looked like a tackle to me. It will go to VR. That was Stando. It was definitely onside. And there we go. Said this before, but if I can see it, just take my word for it. Sucic over the halfway line. Nice ball through. And I thought that was a tackle. See that on the replay. And oh no, it wasn't. He chipped it in. Lovely stuff from Enrique. Brace in two minutes. Free kick. Bournemouth. Elise back post. Gaza free header. And you can't leave the great Gaza unmarked like that. Don't you remember what he did in his debut? Headed in a free kick. He's just got his first goal of the season doing the same. Michael Elise whips one back stick and Bournemouth score three in six minutes. Look at that. That's shocking, that is. Two red and black shirts completely unmarked that. Suchic and Gaza, take your pick. David says, Luca, let me have this one, mate. I rarely get a goal. And he says, fair enough, it's yours. He, that's a shocking goal to concede. That's really poor. That is literally schoolboy stuff, that. That's embarrassing. That's re this is the Champions League. That's embarrassing, that. How do you leave two men unmarked from a free kick close to your area? That's really poor, that. That's so poor. Dear, oh dear. That's the sort of stuff where, like, as a, as a fan or a manager or whatever, it makes you tear your hair out. Like, because, listen, you can accept if there's been a cracking delivery which has caught everyone off guard, you know, that that's fine. But when it's just schoolboy, that that must make that must want to that must make a manager want to tear their hair out. How would you allow that at this level, <laughs> even at Sunday League, like in junior football? That's the highest level I played. If if that ever happened with my with my defence, I'd be fuming as the goalkeeper. Like literally, how does that happen? But also annoyed with myself for not pointing out what player marks who with the man marking system. Didn't do any of that zonal stuff when I was a kid, I'll tell you. But even so, that's really poor, that. I'm still stunned. This is the Champions League. And there were two men unmarked. So, into stoppage time. And this game is all but over as we still lead by two. Question is, can we get a fourth goal late on? And, you know, I say this a lot as Liam Delap does get us that fourth goal. That's his third of the year for Liam Delap already. Heading in a small cone cross there. But, uh, you know, I say I say this a lot. But, like, some sometimes I think people can be a bit too reactionary and too knee-jerk when it comes down to changing things. If you are playing well, and listen, I know that I shouldn't be giving out football manager tips because I'm just trash at the game. But it is one of the few tips I feel comfortable giving. Like, if you're playing really well... You just haven't had the rubber to green or you haven't finished all the chances you've had. Maybe criticise your front line. You know, maybe criticise one player if there was an individual error or maybe replace your striker. But otherwise, if you've got this sort of pattern, leave it. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 clearly, it's working. Clearly, what you're doing is working. You may not just have had what you deserve based on the balance of play so far. Leave it. Maybe individually make a change, but don't change the tactics. If things are working, you don't have the rubber to green. Keep going. Like, metaphor for life and football manager, just keep going and trust that eventually that hard work and the right decision making will eventually pay off. Right, so, uh, about to jump into the second and final game of today's episode. Uh, Spurs are playing at midday, though, so I want to see how they got on uh, against Leicester with a late kickoff tonight, I think, against uh, Leeds at Ellen Road. So, we'll see what happens with the teams playing before us, but. I think we've got enough of a gap now to still be top regardless if the teams with the games in hand still win their games anyway. So I think we'll be all right heading into this one, even if we lose just for the second time this season. But yeah, Man City beat West Ham. Oh, look at that right to death. And Spurs also won as well. So we are still top. But like I said, we have to take this with a pinch of salt. Eight wins in nine is amazing. But can we win these tough fixtures here? Leeds away. They've become a pretty decent side in the save. This is going to be a real big test here, especially missing a few of our key players. McTominay also suspended as well due to an accumulation of yellow cards. We're missing both our DMs. We're missing Kazada as well. And we've only just got Mascara back in the starting 11 after coming back from the twisted ankle. This is a big, big game here. 
Let's see how we get on. So, George Ingall, back for a small comb, Akoli, Mascara back in, and Aaron's at right back. Mia Drag and Urasevich, the Serbia DM duo, with Elise on left, Suchi on the right, Scott supporting Kowal up top. On the pitch, got Ward, Garza, Mitchell, Lopez, Forsby, Radilovic, Trevor de Lapp, and Enrique as well. This is a massive game here. This is a massive test. Key players missing, and our leads away at Ellen Road. Come on, you cherries. Yeah, tricky team leads. Very, very tricky team. They've got a left back that was so close to signing a few years ago. He was one of the best next-gen kids uh, a couple of years back. Really talented young Turkish left back. Caprile, who is one of the best young goalkeepers in the game. Charlie Creswell is still there as well. Ooh! Now, I think that might be outside the area. But that that's an outside shot of Penn there. It's going to go VAR. But was he in or was he... I think he was out. Yeah, no penalty. Free kick. Oh! Almost just bought a, uh, bought a pen 14 minutes in there. And a free kick right on the edge, which Elise is going to take. Marking needs to be better than the game against Benfica. And it was. <laughs> Leeds studied Tavor that free kick for like two hours and said, really, we could have done this in two minutes. Just don't leave two players unmarked and I think we'll be all right. Yeah, Tyler Adams is uh, is still there in the save as well. He's a, a really class, hard-working midfielder. Joe Gelhart turns into a fantastic forward as the years go by as well. Tricky Leeds team, this. Really, Ricky, a really tricky Leeds team. This is going to be a tough one here. And we'll do very well. To I'll take a point here. I'll take a point. I know that if we do want to be a top four team guaranteed, these are the games we should target wins. But based on the absentees today, I'll take a point. Mitoma heads in. Leeds are in front. They're a really tough side to face in this save. Outside of the traditional big six, and also Newcastle as well, you've got to count them two nowadays, I would say my two toughest teams to face in the save are Leeds and Aston Villa. Probably West Ham as well, to be fair. Leeds, Aston Villa and West Ham. Those, those are the teams, the three teams that I really seem to struggle against in this save outside of the big six and Newcastle as well. So down by a goal. Show me something else, boys. I haven't really got going in this one. Down by one. Just need to get some chances going. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pop my instructions on here and say shoot on sight. So far, we haven't really tested Caprile. Get a few shots on his goal. Pepper him. And see whether he sneezes. I don't know what that means. <laughs> anyway, still down by a goal. And Leeds looking to double their lead early in the second half here. Thekmi, the Turkish left back, shoots. Easy save. Still 1-0. No, no, no. Yes, Leeds playing with confidence out there. And we are not... Looks as though our unbeaten streak is going to come to an end here. And, you know, one thing I will say as well in this year's FM is that I do notice that home advantage is really overpowered. As Mitoma slots in his second. Home form, I, I find it really overpowered. I don't know whether you guys agree with me or not, but you might have seen, I put a tweet up yesterday afternoon as I was going through the save, I saw that Everton beat Chelsea 8-0 at home and I do feel as though home form is just ridiculously OP in FM we've won 8 of our first 9 games but it'll now be 8 of 10 the 2 defeats coming away against Leeds and Brentford as well and the only other game we failed to win was PSG and that was also away as well PSG's a little bit different but even so I do feel home form is just so so OP 2-0 down this game is done well based on the shots the shots on target in the XG as well We've actually not played that badly out there, really. But there hasn't really been a clear-cut chance to to admire, if you will. So I think this is one of those games where the stats are a little bit deceptive, you know. Against Benfica, I knew we were going to win, even when we were a goal down, because we were dominating the game. But that one, despite the stats suggesting otherwise, no, nah, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough, that. Disappointing. Disappointing. It is our second loss of the season in the league, and... Listen, we're not we're not we're not the favourites to win the title. We're not in the favourites to be a top four team. So if that's the case, so be it. I want us to be a Champions League team, but it's been an amazing start, but like I said, take it with a pinch of salt. There's a long way to go. We're only the quarter way into the season, and the teams below all have games in hand as well. Long, long way to go. But again, home form, I just find it to be like really, really OP in, in FM. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you look at that. Like the, the top five teams, I mean, even even one of the top five team, top four teams, only has one win in five, and yet that's still considered one of the best records away. I do. It can't just be me. Surely not. 
it can't just be me that thinks this. That home form is just like really OP in FM. I don't know. Maybe it is me. I don't know. Anyway, that'll do it. That'll do it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day. Uh, much love to you all. I'll return in the next episode with Games Against. Oh, I can't miss that. I can't miss that, can I? Manchester United away. And then I'll be Leipzig in Germany in the Champions League as well. I certainly can't miss that massive, massive double header. We'll play through this, but I've got to return with those two. Those games are too big to miss. Have a great day, much love, and I'll see you for the next episode of the FM Save very soon.